G day people, this is Sharpino here, bringing you quite possibly the last vlog of 2021. Wow, what a year this has been for me. Let me show you guys some of my experiences <clears throat> of this year and I'll go through everything that's happened to me this year from January all the way through to right now here in December. So first off, if you're watching this video, thank you for taking the time to watch the video, I do appreciate it and hopefully you guys will enjoy what it is I have to discuss with you guys. So grab a snack, grab a comfy chair, it's going to be a good one, as you can tell from the time of this video. <laughs> um, first and foremost, just a personal update of what's going with me at the moment. Um, you know, work's been, <coughs> excuse me. Work's been a bit up and down lately, so that has been, you know, it's, it's okay because there's a couple of, uh, you know, COVID issues at the moment with uh, groups going on strike and all that sort of thing. Um, the house is doing good. I'm just trying to get um, someone organized to come over and do my backyard so I can start having people over to entertain them at my house because I've been here for over a year and unfortunately I haven't had the chance to really look at doing any work around my house, but hopefully I can get that done within the next year as well. Now, as far as my family goes, um, family's doing good, personal family's doing good, um, as far as extended family, so as you guys will know, last month I did lose my uh, my grandmother on my dad's side uh, last month. Um, she was 86 years old and basically the cause was just, I think she had cancer but she didn't want to get uh, treatment for it. So that was unfortunate and um, my nunnul, or my grandfather, the nunnul is the Maltese term for grandfather, um, on my mum's side, uh, just got out of the hospital a couple of weeks ago. Um, he was in the hospital last month uh, for what's called a leaky ventricle. So if you guys know what that is, basically the ventricle is, is like one part of the heart and apparently it was seeping blood into his body. And thankfully when they saw it, it was only minor so that they could get onto it straight away. If they saw him any later, they said it could have been a major issue because my nunnals had a lot of um, heart problems in the past. So this was just a bit like a scare for everyone because if I'm being perfectly honest guys, um, <clears throat> I think my Nunnal is like the father figure in my life. Um, like I do see my dad from time to time, but growing up, I think my Nunnal was more involved in my life than what he was. So, um, you know, I was definitely scared. I was very worried about his well-being and, you know, whether he was going to come out of this okay. Just after I lost my grandmother, I didn't want to lose my Nunnal as well, you know what I mean? So. But um, he's doing okay now, he's back at home, my grandma's, my nun aunt is looking after him and um, I went to go see him last week and he seems to be doing better. He's obviously a bit tired, um, he can't really do anything because his, his chest is still like in recovery so all he can do is just relax and um, you know just recover and that's, that's all I think everyone can hope for is just that he gets better, you know, so that has been good. So with that, 2021. What has happened for Sharpino in 2021? Well, we kicked off this year, um, I started off this year in a relationship and by the end of the year, I'm no longer in a relationship. <laughs> but it's all good guys, I, I was actually the one that um, broke things off. So I think it was for the better. If you guys just want the quick story of what happened, basically, um, I was living with a, I was with a girl for about two and a half years. We, she moved in with me at the start of the year, and um, you know we lived with each other for six months, and it just didn't work out. There was just a lot of problems, and I just didn't think it was working, and I just asked her to leave. That's just perfectly how I could put it because she moved in with me. You know I'm in my own house, so no, go away. <laughs> You know, um, so I've just been kind of, you know, working on myself at the moment, just trying to get back into losing weight and being good. I've lost about eight kilos so far, so that's been good, but Christmas is coming up, so that could change really quickly. <laughs> um, but honestly, guys, I, like I said, I think it has been a good decision for me to be single again, because I've had a very weird relationship with relationships, if you guys know what I mean. So like, I've, you know, looked at my happiness through someone else and I think it's a very unhealthy way to view your happiness is for someone else because as soon as they let you down you know you're gonna be either very disappointed depressed or just downright just sad you know so I've learned this year that I need to find the happiness within myself before I can find it in someone else because then at least 
If something happens to them, I know that I'm happy with myself, I love myself, I accept myself, you know. Am I perfect? No, but that's okay. I'm willing to work on it, you know. So hopefully, you know, this sort of, um, this ex I have learned from this experience. It's been a good experience. Uh, as much as it has been a bad experience, you just, as long as you learn from a bad experience, I don't think you can really class it as a bad experience, you know. Um, also, I completed my, um, my certificate four, which is what I was trying to do from the start. I started last year in November, and um, thankfully I was able to have it completed by October of this year. So I did it with two months to spare, so awesome. Um, so you guys know I'm trying to work my way up uh, to get a teaching uh, job uh, within my rail industry, because I work in the railways, that's what I do. And um, if I could teach people what I do for work, then I think that would be a pretty good job for me, because I've been doing my job now for 12 years, been in the railways a long time, since I was like, just before I turned 19. So, been there a long time. So, um, but hopefully I can get that, hopefully next year as well. So, um, so as far as 2021 goes, it's been crazy. We were in lockdown for three months. If you guys don't know, New South Wales had lockdown since mid-July, and they only started lifting toward the end of October. So we've been locked down for a long time. I know some places like Victoria where the lockdowns have been going on for a year. So I mean, I'm not saying we've had a we've had it pretty bad, but it's not as bad as being in lockdown for a year. So, you know, but regardless, I think it's been a tough year for everyone with COVID. And again, COVID's just robbed another year off us. And I hope COVID doesn't do that again next year. I hope that, you know, COVID will be treated in the same way as a common cold or the flu. I just hope that we could just go get a, a jab, get medication and treat it more easy so it doesn't become such a world crisis, you know, the way that it has been. So hopefully that is the case. Now, now that we've done my 2021 review, let's do the Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl review. Ha ha ha. So, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, what can I say about this game? Honestly, there was a lot of excitement behind it because I think this is a game that we've been asking for for a long time. And was it a great game? Absolutely. Was it a perfect game? Absolutely not. You know, I think that, look, a lot of games have had issues, but I have to admit, not even Sword and Shield had issues that this game had. This Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, I don't know if it's because Ilka made it, I don't know what it is, but the amount of issues that were in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl is ridiculous, as opposed to Sword and Shield. And I'll go through it when I've been with you guys. So, um, it's a faithful remake. It did a very good job. It did amp up the difficulty of the game by giving some of the um, the gym trainers and all that like items on their Pokemon, giving them more competitive move sets and making them better. That I will concede. They did a good job at that. They definitely made it harder than the original Diamond Pearl, so I can commend them for that. But like Sword and Shield, the biggest issue I have for these games, well, actually, there's one additional issue. Uh, because of this game. The first one is the experience share. Now, I've said this about Sword and Shield, and I'm going to say this about Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. They need to have the ability to turn off the experience share. The last time they did that was in Auras. I don't know why, but from that... Actually, no, sorry. It's, um, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. I think I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that was the last time they had optional experience share. But since Sword and Shield, it's been non-optional. It's You have to have it. And I think it's stupid, but the biggest thing that annoys me more about this game is the friendship bullshit. And you guys know what I'm talking about. It's the stuff where, you know, your Pokemon survive on 1 HP because they don't want you to feel sad, or they learn to crit because they want to be praised, or they break through a status so you don't feel upset or anything. I, I don't like that. I think a lot of us competitive players don't like that. It makes playing the game not as challenging because rather than the RNG of crits and all that being what they are. They are now enhanced by this friendship bullshit. And I don't like that. And I think a lot of us have voiced their opinions online saying, that, hey, we don't like it, you know? But granted, for granted, if we could change those two things, I think this could be almost perfect. I perfectly think so. Um, but Cynthia, Jesus, she was hard. And I mean, she is one of the hardest champions. I'm telling you this, she was harder than Leon and G-Max Charizard and Sun Shield, and she was a lot harder than Steven with Mega Metagross and Auras. I'm pretty sure I can sit here with confidence and say that. You know, because her team is so well built, they all had items, they all had this and that. Not every single champion has that, you know, that, that thing, you know, but 
you know, Cynthia was a really, really hard cha champion. And she's one of the best champions, mind you. You know, probably a lot of uh, champions that, uh, a champion that a lot of guys would <laughs> simp over, you know. Um, but, you know, I think they did a really good job with, you know, remaking this game. But, another two issues I have with this game, other than those two things that need to be ch patched, I personally hope they do, but turning off the friendship, uh, friendship Amy and bloody experience yet, they've defeated the purpose of having the shiny charm. Now, in previous games, when you complete the Pokedex, you do get the shiny charm. So, not only is it a completionist, but for the ability to shiny hunt more easier, you know, what's the point now? Because apparently, according to the um, data miners of the game, the only thing the shiny charm will affect is Masuda method, like egg hatching. It will not affect random encounters. Random encounters will still be 1 in 4096, even if you do get the shiny charm. So it's like, well, why would you want to complete the Pokedex? Unless you're a completionist and you want to complete the Pokedex, what's the point of having the, the, the shiny charm? Other than if you want to breed for competitive shinies, then that, I guess, there's a purpose. But, you know, back in X and Y, back in Oras, back in Sword and Shield, you kind of want to have that heightened shiny chance, you know what I mean? And um, that's the whole point, you know? Like, it's a reward for you for being the nut, for completing the Pokedex, other than the achievement, is that shiny charm. But now it's like, okay, you do it, you get a Shine Charm, but it does nothing. Like, why? Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just want to improve Shiny Charm over everything? Is that the whole point of it? A lot of Full Arts Hunters going, I don't see a problem. Okay, fair enough. And you keep doing what you're doing. But for those who like Shiny Hunting with Shiny Charms, which is their choice, why rip them off? You know what I mean? So, and the glitch, oh my god, the glitches. Oh my god. <laughs> My god, I've seen that many videos online of um, glitches and jeez, some of these are just so bad. I mean, you've got the Shaman location glitch, you've got menu glitches for item multiplication, Pokemon cloning. It's ridiculous. Again, no game that I've seen in history has had this level of abuse of glitches or just such bad coding that glitches like this exist, like holy shit! Like I've watched video after video after video, new glitches coming out, new more menu gl uh, uh, glitches and all this. Like, what the hell? Get your shit together, Ilka. What the hell are you doing? I've never met a game. I mean, I understand that some Pokemon games, or I, I, some games, not Pokemon games, some games when they first come out, you know, there are glitches and all that. They made a patch after some really bad glitches from the first one. But they're still there, or they've been manipulated some other way. I don't understand how you let that happen. You know, like, I, 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 I couldn't believe it. Like, seriously, I was just like, what? What the fuck? Like, why? I'm watching, and I'm just like... Ugh, ugh. Who needs to hack the Switch now? You can just do the bloody glitches straight off your own console. And there's no repercussions of your account being banned or anything. I mean, maybe there is in the future, but I mean, as long as you're not using illegal Pokemon, I don't see why they would. Because exploiting a glitch is not, you know, a bannable offense. I personally don't think anyways. I think making videos on how to glitch is, so I'd be very careful to those who are making those videos because if Nintendo or Ilka wanted to come after you, I think they definitely be within their rights to do so. Um, does that mean everyone else is taking advantage of the situation and get a hit for it? Well, they're not the one advertising it on YouTube for everyone to do, so I don't think so, because then they could say, well, I was gifted these Master Balls, I, I played the game 999 times. You can't fault them for that. And, I mean, everyone's different, so, I mean, it, it, it's it's up for a debate at this point. Will these glitches get patched out? I hope so. But, are people going to still use them? <laughs> Absolutely. So, that's my, if I was to give Brilliant Diamond uh, Shining Pearl a, a, a rating, I'll probably give it a rating of, I'll probably say 7.5 out of 10. I'd say that's a fair, that's a fair rating. Based off story, based off difficulty, based off glitches, based off everything. So my entire experience of Billion Diamond Shining Pearl, I put down as a 7.5 out of 10. Sadly, not as good as maybe some of the previous games like Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun and Moon, I think I had better experiences playing them than I did with Billion Diamond Shining Pearl. I know it's sad to say because I know that Generation 4 is one of the best generations in Pokemon. But I don't know, it just... 
it was good. I did like the chibi art. I know a lot of people pretty much push shit on Ilka for that. I personally didn't mind it. I actually did like the chibi art, to be perfectly honest. Um, but yeah, I just think those things that the friendship part of it and the experience share needs to be changed. I think they need to be changed and the glitches need to get removed. I personally think that's what they should do. Okay, now that that's all done, my review is done, let's talk about what's next for Sharpino. Well, hopefully I can get some shiny hunting uh, put up soon on the channel. I want to try to start my shiny hunting uh, for shiny Turtwee. As I said, I've got myself two capture cards, I've got myself two switches, so that I can try to go ahead and get me that shiny turtle. I want to try to get shiny Turtwee for the first shiny in, you know, well I've already found random shinies off screen, but as, as far as my first on screen shiny live in front of you guys, I would love for that to be a Turtwee, because I love Turtwee. And you know, I want to try to shiny hunt the starters, and then with double shiny hunting, maybe I might do um, the uh, Eternal Forest, the double hunts, for the exclusive uh, versions of the Pokemon, such as Murkrow and Mischievous. Um, maybe I could do single hunting, underground, or you know, soft reset for the legendaries. I've got so many different options for you guys to shiny hunt for, so I'm very excited for that. Even Spirit Tomb, that's another one. Um, Heatran, someone got a shiny Heatran the other day, so there's a lot of different options for us to shiny hunt, and I look forward to being able to share that with you guys and hopefully you guys will stay tuned for that now as far as let's plays goes in the channel before i left um i was doing pokemon soulstone shiny lock that will be returning um as far as i'm aware it will be coming back as of next monday so i'm taking the rest of the week off just to rest up get ready for the continuation of the series maybe film an episode so that by monday you guys have an episode um but thankfully, before um, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl's release, I actually have all my Pokemon team ready to go. Because if you guys don't recall, there was a giant massacre in the last episode of Soulstone Shining Lock, and it was just horrendous. But now that we've got everyone trained up and everyone's ready to go, everyone's level 80, I think that we are good to go to continue the series. So hopefully you guys will stay tuned for that one. And hopefully you guys enjoy today's video and all the... Um, all the things I had to discuss. So if you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure you hit the button down below because as always, your support is great for the um, We didn't hit 2000 this year, but that's my fault because I was on hiatus for six months due to my studies. But, um, you know, I think that 2021 has definitely been, it's been a good and bad year. There's been a lot of good, but there's also been a lot of bad. You know what I mean? Like, you know, the good is that I completed my studies and, you know, my family's all good and unfortunately lost someone, but the other one's in recovery. Um, the bad, I guess, you know, no girlfriends and, and all the bullshit has come after that. But again, guys, I'm happy. I'm good right now. I think, like I said, if you guys could take anything from this video, if there's anything you could learn from my experiences, is that you need to find happiness in yourself. I know I said this earlier in the video, but I think I really need to highlight this because a lot of people, I feel, try to find happiness in others. You know, so guys will try to find their happiness in being in a relationship with a woman. Guy, uh, and vice versa, some women will try to find their happiness in being with a guy. And it doesn't work, and then they get depressed, and then they get sad, and then shit happens. So, find the happiness that you're looking for in yourself. I think that is something that I can definitely... And be... Be a collaborative person. Don't be a negative person. Be someone who is open to new ideas, open to new experiences. Just be that person because I'm telling you right now, my ex was not that. And it's probably one of the reasons why I broke it off with her. But just be a person that you are prepared to welcome in new things into your life. Because if you are not, you either adapt and change or you get left in the dust. That's basically the way I see it. Things are constantly changing. Another thing I don't like is the dislike button removal off YouTube. What the fuck, YouTube? I might actually make a video about that because I was so pissed off when I found that out that. Like, seriously, removing the dislike button has to be one of the most dumbest ideas YouTube has ever considered doing, and I'm that passionate about it. I might make a video of the top five reasons why removing the dislike button is a bad idea. So stay tuned for that if I get around to making that video. But goddamn, I think that is fucking stupid. But, um... As far as uh, the Shiny Lock goes, guys, I know I was doing videos every day for Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, but for Soulstones, I'll be doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. It will come back. So um, I'll have four days off, three days on. Hopefully, you guys, um, 
will understand why because sometimes soul stones it's a lot of time and preparation to uh, make the videos especially Pokemon die and I have to train them up so just bear with me on that one and hopefully you guys will enjoy the content that I bring to this channel but ladies and gentlemen hopefully you enjoyed if you did like button down below subscribe if you're new to the channel um, 2,000 subscribers hopefully will hit by next uh, by the end of 2022 um, you know, and the only way I could do that is through the support of you guys. I, I, I can't thank you guys enough for your support this year. It has definitely helped me out, especially when I wasn't making content. I was still getting views, getting comments, getting subscribers. So it definitely motivated me to come back to you guys to keep making content. So uh, just to post recording, Chris, here, just before I forget, um, I just want to wish you guys all, also, I forgot to mention this, but a happy uh, and safe Merry Christmas to you guys. Um, Hopefully you guys have a safe Christmas, you know, you stay safe over the holiday break and, um, you know, you stay close with your family, you cherish your family and friends that help you be a better person. Just do that, guys. And, um, you know, hopefully I'll see you and talk to you guys in the next year. So, a little quick edit for me. I love you guys. Thank you so much. And until next time, I see you guys in the next video. Stay safe, stay sharp, and I'll catch you guys all next time. Later.